everyone. Welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in for the first show of the week this Tuesday afternoon. I would like to welcome in my next guest, the founder, Lisa Rayola of Hope in Maine. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me, Kate. Big year, big month, fifth anniversary of the food incubator and more up in Warren. And I want to really get back to the roots, tell your story a little bit. Did you envision being where you'd be? five years from starting Hope in Maine? No, I didn't because the first thing I like to say is this project found me. I was not intending to do this product. I was intending to um, start my own food business. So I was not envisioning this, but it has been a pleasant surprise and a great journey for over 200 small food businesses in Rhode Island who have benefited from the project. 200 small food businesses? One in three new food companies mm -hmm. in the state come out of Hope in Maine. That's right. It's been a very productive little project for the state of Rhode Island. So it, it has um, launched so many new food businesses. And I think people who had food ideas that might have never thought of starting their own business because we can make it very accessible and affordable came to Hope in Maine. So I think it inspired a lot of new food businesses too. Okay, so as always, when Hope in Maine comes in, we featured a lot of the businesses there. Never come empty-handed. Never. So uh, what are we featuring here today that folks should know as being uh, sprung out of Hope in Maine? Right. So this, there's a few classics here. Um, we have Anchor Toffee, and they have graduated, and they, you can find them at Bowen's Wharf. Um, they are a, uh, a national company at this point. Um, Sacred Cow. Um, the, um, the Holy Granola Experience, they are also a national company and they won a, a Good Food Award in San Francisco um, this past year, which only uh, a few companies in the country have that honor. And since Hope in Maine has spawned so many companies, we've actually had three Good Food Award, award winners okay. from Rhode Island, which is amazing. Mojo Sauce um, is something that we co-pack for, uh, for the maker, for, for Walt Palm. And so that's a service that we offer that helps companies to scale so that if uh, they stay in the kitchen all the time and they're only making their product in the kitchen and they're not out there selling their project product, it's mm. hard to scale. Yes. Um, Zippy Sauce, which is a Rhode Island classic, if you've ever eaten at Tavino's um, in Warren, uh, everybody loves the Zippy Shrimp, so now you can make that at home. Um, Anna Shrub is another graduate. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a great new product, um, uh, Chico Monina, which is a Mexican uh, spice blend with um, the hatch chilies. And uh, you have to meet the owner, Rita, because she'll tell you all about why hatch chilies are the only way to go if you're making. <laughs> uh, so I, I would keep that in mind if you're making anything for um, a, a Sunday football game. And of course, our friend Kathleen Bellici with um, bis her biscotti. Well, it's always so fun to see the diverse array of products. And as you mentioned, again, folks who have that idea come to Hope mm -hmm. in Maine. But one of the best parts of it, too, is the outreach into the community. A weekly folks descending on Hope yes. and Main and, and coming and seeing all the businesses with their wares. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that. How's it been to really interact with the community? So to right. take those business individuals who want to bring their products to market, but again saying, yeah. hey, come check us out yes. all the time. <laughs> so one of the great, so, so what Kate's talking about is that we do a weekly market all through the summer called the schoolyard market. And it's really a maker's market where you can come and, and sample and purchase all of these products. And we try to encourage our makers to get right in there and start interacting with the eater because, because if you're only sampling your product with your husband or wife, your son or daughter, your mom or dad, they're probably going to tell you it's pretty good. <laughs> but <laughs> you find that you get real honest feedback from the, from the eaters. And, and uh, we've had lots of people crowdsource their recipes over the course of a, a summer market where they start out with you know going on one path but they end up going down another because they get a lot of feedback from the eater whether it's about the recipe the packaging the price point the branding um, so if you were in any other setting and you had to pay for that consumer uh, research <laughs> you, you wouldn't be able to afford it yeah. as a startup so that's one of the great things about hope and maine is we're out in the community the community loves it and 
the makers love it because they're able to get that feedback. So we bring three or 400 people a week to, uh, to the schoolyard market. And we have two more left in October on Sundays at 9 o'clock, 9 to 1. And then starting in November through May, we do once a month the meet your maker market. So you can come meet the makers and meet the people that make your your food and we like to encourage people to eat the holidays buy consumable products for the holidays and our holiday markets in november december are crazy for that reason what says love and gives like food exactly <laughs> that's exactly what we want to the way to everyone's promote. stomach so what do you tell folks who think they've got an idea you know how they go from that right you were there that plan yep. wow i really have made this family recipe folks tell me i uh -huh. should really start producing it and marketing it you know, I know you've got a boot camp coming up. What are the conversations when you have with budding entrepreneurs about what it takes yeah. to go to that next level? Yeah, so with the boot camp is a great all-day experience, which gives people a good flavor for what it's like to start and, and persist with a small food business. So we bring in some people who have graduated. We bring in people who've actually decided to stop production because you know, that wasn't for them. Okay. So it's a very honest experience. Uh, and, and we want it to be that way because I'm as proud of the people who decide not to start a food business or continue yeah. with the food business as the ones that have been successful because they didn't have to mortgage their house to mm, do it. Yeah you know, you're able to come to Hope in Maine at a very low price point with no food experience, no business experience, and start a food business. And we've had people do that successfully. You're also able to stop a food business before it eats into your savings yeah. and you decide, hey, this isn't for me because you really have to be very dedicated to do it, to grow it. So we can take anybody and help them start a food business, but, but they have to want to do it because we don't run your business for you. And so at the five-year mark, Elisa, as we're here again, showcasing some of the great products, again, everyone always asks, where do you see yourself in the five years? I mean, do you have the model down? Uh, is, this, is this the size and scope that you yeah. think is really helping those entrepreneurs in Rhode That's Island a great forward. question. You know, we're, I feel like we're always learning. I used to say when you've seen one food business, you've seen one. And now <laughs> I've changed that because we've seen over 200. And so we've learned a lot. And we've been more and more able to provide the kind of um, business and technical assistance that our makers need to be successful. So one of the big trends that I see is actually coming from the state with Supply RI wanting to buy locally. Mm -hmm. Uh, whenever they can, um, state institutions, the universities, the hospitals, et cetera, um, which I think means that instead of putting things in these kinds of containers, you would put them, we would package for institutional use, okay. which is not a place where many of our businesses started five mm. years ago. Um, the idea that we are doing the contract manufacturing, small batch contract manufacturing is almost impossible to find in the country. So you, when you go to, when you leave Hope in Maine, a lot of times you can't go to a big um, private label manufacturing facility unless you are doing huge, huge runs. Scale. So to yeah. do small scale um, manufacturing, something we can do for you, which allows you to grow your business, I think we're going to be doing a lot more of that. Okay. And I think you're going to see more shared use facilities in the state. Yes. Well, again, five years, one in every three food companies starting up here in Rhode Island are springing up from Hope and Maine. Yes. So, Lisa Rayola, I so appreciate you taking the time Thank to you. come in today. I appreciate you watching this Rhode Island success story. And don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with our last guest about a children's book and author's festival this weekend. We'll be right back on Go Local Live. Thank you.